got the bull, sir. In our bus. What an upset to them. Right. Orlan Bobar will score. Step shot will fly up and thunder with some magic in the air.
open three-point shot. Seven to nothing start here for Mindoro. Oh, a little bit triangle offense yeah, right. right there for the Tamaraos. Desiderio in and out. Bono short on the follow. Olivares bullets a pass inside. Reyes the extra pass. Mindoro loses it. The white shirts here on the run. Gallego goes all the way. Left hand finish, no good. Vico Lanyal yet to score. Alanis, can this be the first basket? Still no. Offensive rebound. JB blocked by Lester Reyes. Uh, let a very jittery start here for Vico. Couldn't find the bottom of the net. And to make matters worse, former Paranaque Patriot Pariliagas committing the offensive foul. And you gotta wait for that de uh, defender to come over. Otherwise, you don't give them enough space. That's gonna be a foul called on you on that screen action. Early substitution here para kay Coach Raymond Valenzona. Chris Javier, the former UE Red Warrior, will be coming in for Pariliagas. Desiderio, pinch post action with Ken Bono. Bono gets it to Desiderio. Paul backing down, Shaq Alanis. Cross court pass, Melton. One hand shot, Ken Bono doesn't go. Rafi Reyes gets the board. Gallego, Chris Javier. And he loses it as well. Lots of turnovers here for both teams. Looks like the court seems to be a little bit of slippery. Gallego, the extra pass. Alanis leaves it. And finally, a bucket for Vicolandia. That's Chris Javier getting the end one. Well, sometimes that's really all the, all the only thing that you need to see to finally get a basket and to start things going. Sure, you're trailing right now, but really good hustle plays here for Vicolandia. They try to get to the open floor, try to finish it over to Chris Javier for that foul in the hoop. Chris Javier, one of the former PBA player seeing action for Picolandia this season and he gets all of three points now para sa kanyang kopunan four point lead for Mindoro Coach we're seeing the Tamaraos run the triangle right. offense and a big reason is because uh -huh. of their head coach Jer Kawaling who used to run the triangle when he was playing under coach Glenn Capasso when Got that personnel, especially with Ken Bono at the focal point of that triangle. You put him on the low block or the pinch post. It's going to be deadly if you have Ken Bono right there with the triangle. For the team, Coach, what are the biggest components needed when implementing a triangle system? Well, the first, you got to have a guards that are players that can actually play multiple positions. I mean, they, who could post up, who could shoot up uh, straight up, face up and who are very high IQ players, such as all these players that we have right now for uh, Mindoro. Is it a surprise that these guys are actually responding? I don't think so. A lot of experience for these guys would really bode well para sa Mindoro team. Olivares sinking a jumper on the other side para sa Mindoro. And as we go to the side of Bicolandia, Shaq Alan is scoring on his strong side, getting another end one opportunity for the white shirts. Yeah, make a mistake about it. Shaq Alanis is going to be one of those guys that's going to be required to produce those points, be it from the outside on those dribble penetrations. You got a lefty on the right side of the floor. It's deadly always going middle. Alanis completes the three-point lane. Nine to six now is the count. Under six minutes to play here in the opening frame. Desiderio. His claim to fame was his time with the UP Fighting Maroons that historic, memorable shot against the USD Growling Tigers when he said, Atin to, papasok to. At that time, though, his shot did not go inside, and a loose ball foul will be called against Mindoro. And, and Bicol really got to be able to locate uh, offensive rebounders on, on Mindoro because that offense allows you to get to those spots, good opportunities for rebounds. And if you've got these lengthy players right there in the shaded area, you have to be able to locate them and box them out. You want to get the defensive board and run the other way. The HO on the left side. Alanis almost traveled. Shaq spins to his strong side. Leaves it for Rojas. Gets his own miss. Active hands from Ralph Olivares. That results in a foul 
against the former Batanga City player. But at least you like a Bicol actually batting it out on the boards. They're a minus one right now, 87 on that department. But considering the size of uh, Mindoro, it's at least a good thing that they're batting it out in the shaded area. John Etzel Rojas, a rookie here in the MPBL. There you see Coach Raymond Valenzona, who last year was an assistant to Coach Aldrin Morante with the Montelupa Cagers. Coach Raymond, of course, comes from a very basketball family, the son of the legendary Toro Valenzona. Oh, yeah. Many time champion coach. 9 to 7, two point lead being held here by the guys in blue. Melton at the corner. He was waiting for that up screen that right. was supposed to be provided on top. You and I, coach, we uh, both know this triangle <laughs> system almost in and out. <laughs> that, that pass goes to the corner. Somebody's got to back pick that wing. Desiderio gets the ball screen. Ball turns the corner. Nine on the shot clock. Melton back to Desiderio. Ball. Long on the three. Loose ball ends up with Justin Melton. Pableo wants it down low. Instead, they go to Justin. Melton back to Kobe. Shot clock winding down. Somebody's got to take it. Tate Tedoro, the leading scorer for Mindoro last year. Gets fouled on the way up. And I, I guess that's going to be on JV if I'm not, if I got that correctly. That JV Gallego is going to be the one called with that foul. Tete Todoro played 21 out of the possible 28 games para sa kanilang kupunan a year ago, averaging almost 12 points per game and played 24.7 minutes per contest. Todoro, one of the most crafty scorers that we've seen here in the MPBL. And there's going to be a technical foul called against JV Gallego. Yeah, as uh, Toy Tete Tudoro was actually taking that shot. And so JV gets called for that technical foul. So Gallego will be called for that T. Tudoro will be taking the free throw. No problem for Mr. Tete Tudoro. And Galina Javi, we were talking about waiting for that back pick on that wing. Huerto actually. Has to get to be used to that action, that trigger of that pass to the corner. Actually waited it, thinking that the ball would go to him when that ball went to the corner. Rafi Reyes at the controls here for Bicolandia. Rojas sprays it out. Alanes from the right quadrant, no good. Just didn't melt it with the rebound. Shaq Alanes still could not find that range from the outside. That usually is his specialty of the house. But right now, a little dry on that spot. Para kay Shaq. Desiderio, the spin goes up strong, left it short. That's gonna go to Picolandia. Last touch on Mindoro. Yeah, ganda ng dinipensa doon ni Chris I mean, he really just stood his ground, put his hand up, just waited for that shot to go up. And if he misses, he's gonna be ready to get that rebound in favor for Picol. Sakalanes goes out in favor of. One of the holdovers of Bicol from last year, Marvin Lee. Lee also played with the Iloilo United Royals for some time. Desiderio gets a solid screen from Kobe Pableo. Pableo having trouble against Rojas, picks up his dribble. Melton doubled. Extra pass. Yodoro, catch, set, fire. No good. There's going to be a push against Tete. Well, again, second action in a row that you've seen really good coverage for uh, Javier. Once that shot went up for uh, Tete, you know, you got to be instinct to try and box out that shooter, especially if it's a long shot. It normally results in a long rebound, so you got to be out there ready to box out. Well, the bad thing here for Mindoro is they're already over the limit. Yeah. That's why Chris Javier will be taking two more free throws. Picolandia so far only 2 out of 13 from the field, while Mindoro 4 out of 13. So both teams not really very efficient yet offensively with 
Almost seven minutes gone by here in the first quarter, Coach. Your initial thoughts so far on the performance of these teams? Well, I feel that Bicol's struggle is really coming from not being able to connect from the outside. Your two primary shooters, Gallego and Ashak Alanes, are all out of five combined to start the game. And so it doesn't open up anything on the lane side. And that lane is continually going to be packed until they make those shots. New guy on the floor here for Coach J.R. Kawaling, Andoy Estrella former Quezon City player who used to share that wanted backcourt under coach Vis Valencia with right there. Bono already with four points in this game. Uh, and boy, you could he actually hear Ken Bono. Squads. That's the first bomb connected by Biko from outside. Uh, Papuleo kicks it out to Tudoro who doesn't hesitate to take it from way out here. It's Rafi Reyes all the way for two. Yes. A little mini run here for Biko. They're on a five-point run. You got to get a good stop and convert the other way to try and spread some more this lead you got right now. White shirts now in the lead, 14 to 12. Estrella after the hard show. Bono with a hand in his face. That short Chris Xavier gets his third rebound of the game. RJ Delis, 9.6 points per game last year under coach Jason Santiago with this very same team. Rojas not phased by the presence of Ken Bono. Push shot goes in, and suddenly, Bicolania is up by four points, which prompts Coach J.R. Kawaling to burn one of his ceasefires here with two minutes and two seconds to go. Right, look at this one here. Ross, not like what you said, very unfaced in front of uh, Ken Bono, and sometimes you really need to do that if you want to get to another better season this year for Bicol. You are still watching the MPBL. Para sa Bicol, hindi lamang new players, pero pati na rin ang kanilang coaching staff. Bago rin at pinangungunahan nga yan ni Coach Raymond Valenzona who relies heavily on his veteran players. Andiyan sina Alanes, Deles, Reyes, Lee at Javier. Isama na rin natin ang kanilang mga champion rookies na sina Rafael Go at JV Gallego from their own college schools. Just like all other teams, they're still struggling with chemistry. But so far naman daw maganda ang pinapakita nila in their previous practices. The guys to look out for in Mendoro, special mention, siyempre, si Naken Bono, Rios, at Teodoro. Sabi nga ni Coach, these are the players that are just hard to stop, but you can lessen their output. Back to you guys. Thank you so much. That was Andrea Indicio. You know, both of these teams really looking to bounce back from horrendous performances last season. And Australia will be helping Mindoro do just that. Both of these teams a combined seven wins last year, Coach. Yeah, and a lot of the struggles really is because of, of you know the way that they faced up against the bigger teams, and especially for Bicol after losing James Martinez and Wawi Escocia, their one-two punch really carried and led a lot of the stats from last year for Bicol, went missing middle of the season, and that that downhill really just started from there. Marvin Lee, former USD Growling Tiger, as we take a look at the free throw numbers that you saw at the bottom of your screens. Only one miss so far from the charity stripe para dito sa Bicolandia. Two out of two for Marvin Lee. Uh, this is a guy who I've seen grow up through the years. My last year playing for the Baby Tamaraus was his residency year in FBU. Moved on over to USD to play seniors basketball in the UAAP. Very great guard who is also not afraid to mix it up defensively as we take a look at the bench points. Plus 10 advantage for Coach Raymond Valenzona's squad. Casajeros left wide open from 15 feet. Rebound goes to Jordan Rios. Welcome back to the MPBL, by the way. Oh, yeah, one of those talents in the guard spot that could really help out the course. And what about Ken Bono? Six points now in the game. He makes basketball look so easy. Uh, he says, hey, guys, this is still the shaded area. This is where I do my living. 
Marvin Lee hitting another three right here. Now, if Ken Bono's domain is a shaded area, Marvin Lee is a dead shot from beyond the arc. 23 to 16, three possession ball game. Uh -huh. well, so far, Bicol actually shooting so much better from three, at least in their last three attempts. They're two out of three on their last three attempts, but they're two out of the out of eight so far in game but important thing is you're seeing those shots fall from the outside and hopefully that rubs off on JB as well as Shaq Alanis later on in the game when they come back. Foul called against Picolandia. Almost a four second differential shot clock game clock. Ken Bono gets the extra pass from Tay Tay. Bono yet to hit from the outside. Offensive rebound Jordan Rios is fouled. He will take two shots. There are certain things that you get to learn and upskill when you play 3x3. And Jordan Rios has really learned to survey that field on the board. As we did see this three right here by Chris Javier. This three point shot is brought to you by Extreme One Stop Shop Appliances. Chris Javier, brilliant so far off the bench para kay coach Raymond Valenzon, a big reason why they are up in bench production in this game against Mindoro. And just to tell you how deep the guard rotation of Mindoro is, man, Jordan Lee is coming off from the bench. That's real deep. Marvin Lee, his pitch from near the half line, way too strong, and that's gonna be it for the first 10 minutes of action between Mindoro and Picolandia. Ken Bono just really very impressive still. His first stint here in the MPBL, by the way. He's playing against a team that he was an assistant coach of last year. Chris Javier off the bench with eight points so far in this game. Score is 23 to 18. The end of the first quarter score brought to you by GameX. Babalik ang Marika Pilipinas Basketball League, ang Liga ng Bawat Pilipino. RJ Dell is one of the few bright spots for Coach Jason Santiago last year with Bicol. 9.6 points per game, a very efficient 43.7% from the field. Almost 8 rebounds per game and a couple of assists per contest. He is an all-around player that Coach Raymond Valenzona, I'm sure, is still very happy to have from last year's squad. And the consistency of his showing, even without James and Awawi right there, really carrying the load for the struggles of a Beagle in last season, really paying off for him. Estrella, the kick out to the corner. Tete Yodoro knocks it down from beyond the arc. That's only the second three-point shot of the game for Mindoro. You know, because of Mindoro, you've got guards that can actually knock it from the outside as well as do dribble penetrations and create open situations for the other players. Liarena. Hit a two-pointer earlier in the first quarter. Could not hit from the outside. A steal initiated by Marvin Lee. Deles, not really his cup of tea, but he shows that he's been working on that outside shot, and he connects from the corner. And he says, Abby, that was 2023. That was <laughs> okay. 2024. I got this. <laughs> well, happy New Year to you, Mr. Deles. <laughs> Former CSB Blazer in the NCAA. Estrella. Rios will not be shy. A little bit too strong. Casajeros has Lee leaking out. Marvin tries to save it. Marvin Lee still gets it to RJ Deles. Chris Javier. That's going to be a travel against the big bats. A case of over eagerness for uh, Chris Javier. He knew already 
that he had advantage inside, but a little bit of baby steps in that situation cost him that turnover. Saros Llarena, one of the homegrowns for Picolandia, will be coming out in favor of JV Gallego. Andrea mentioned earlier that Gallego, one of the champion players from the collegiate ranks with this Picolandia squad, along with Rafael Go. And funny enough, Gallego and Go actually bitter rifles in the NCAA oh, as yeah. Gallego played for Beda and itong si Go naman was a vital cog of the rotation for the Little Knights. Nice, right. Score inside. Oh, no, no. That is not going to go in. Delis waits for backup. Marvin Lee almost stopped the circle three. That doesn't work. That's short. Teodoro slows it down. Transition. Outside shot. No good. Rios, the easy putback. Jordan Rios. Getting the offensive rebound off the miss from Tete Teodoro. And that cuts the lead of Picolandia to just three right now. It's Coach Raymond Balenzona's turn to burn a ceasefire here. Eight minutes remaining here in the first half. Former JRU Heavy Bomber, Tete Didoro, who has been with this Mindoro squad for a couple of years now. Here are his numbers from last year. 11.5 points per game, 34.8% from the field, almost three rebounds and almost a couple of assists per game. Didoro, just really a tough cover offensively. Yeah, Lalo Nasi played with uh, Paolo Hobalde in that last season. Really a recipient of a lot of those beautiful times by Paolo, Paolo but right now, He's on his own, he's working with other teammates now, and he's gonna find different ways to get those same numbers or even better for Tete. Oh, Casajeros getting the better of the matchup against Jordan Rios. What about Lordi? Instant impact right away para sa kanya. Let's take a look at his move. Uh, you see that uh, dribble penetrate, going middle, tight, try to stay in control with a little one-two step and a floater going fade on that elbow jumper. You know, Casajeros, especially in his professional career, has always been known to be a defensive stopper, a guy who comes off the bench and gives you energy. But many people forget that he was an able scorer during his days that's with right. the UE Red Warriors. That's right. And th that's something you kind of go back to. Even when you were a small kid, you wanted to be scoring a lot of points. And so that's innate in a player like such as Lordi. Desiderio has been struggling to get on the board, still scoreless in this game. Five-point lead here for Picolandia. Gallego rejects the screen, eventually gives it back. Pariliagas, no bounce on the finger roll. We go to the other side. Estrella, ooh, extra pass, gets it back. And Doy Estrella with the teardrop. One well, thing's for sure, you see a lot of selfishness in the Mindoro team right now. Finding the open guy and letting him be the one to finish. Got to give a lot of credit so far to the way Mindoro is playing to coach J.R. Kawaling. For a team that's only been practicing for over two weeks. That's right. This is impressive. That's right. Take a look at this play of the game that's brought to you by Buenas. Team passing right there. Impressive for Mindoro. And I think that's actually been, I guess, the character of the teams, at least early in the first two, ga two game days that we've seen. I mean, short preparation, but these guys are really battling it out, just like how we saw Val City performed against uh, Zamboanga in that game. Opener last uh, s Saturday, was it? Uh, Zamboanga, Valenzuela did put on a show, especially uh -huh. in that opening quarter of their game. And 40 minutes, apparently, was not enough to judge the outcome of that game and they had to go an extra five minutes but Coach Louis Alas and his squad who are now known as the Zamboanga Master Sardines winning that game by 682 to 76. Marvin Lee at the line for two shots. He misses on the first. 
and you have to give credit also to you know the, the coaching staff of uh, Val City under coach uh, Morante and coach Alvin's really trying his best to prepare his team considering the amount of time that they've had so far in preparing for this season they go up top Desiderio Ariar against Gallego that shot rolls out of the rim. Lester Reyes keeps it alive. Look at him. Gets three white shirts inside that shaded area, getting the offensive rebound for Mindoro. Well, a little bit of that miss uh, from the elbow is really coming from a little bit of hesitation right there on that elbow jumper. Now we take this opportunity to turn you over to Miss Andrea Indicio at courtside. Kanina nakausap ko ang isa sa mga assistant coaches ng Mindoro na si Coach TJ Marquez. He shared to me na one month pa lang nage-ensayo ang Tama Rouse. Even so, hindi naman daw sila gaanong nahirapan. Why? The luxury of having the likes of Bono, Desiderio, and Melton makes it possible. And yes, your observation is right, Javi and Coach Mike. The Tams are using the triangle offense wherein Bono, Kawaling, and Melton are very familiar with. Kumbaga sila daw ang pinaka-vocal and helpful sa pagtuturo nito. Coach TJ sees the camaraderie with his boys which makes him 90% confident confident with his new team. Yung natitira daw na 10%, yun daw yung mga mali na makikita nila for today's game na alam naman natin, never nga naman mawawala sa isang coach. Right, guys? That is right, Andrea. Thank you so much for that report. And yeah, tama ka, no? Justin Milton. Yeah. Played under Coach Tim Cohn That's with right. the San Mikofi Mixers in that Grand Slam champion team. That is right. And a lot of players, you know, are really knowledgeable when it comes to that triple post. Offense and you know, too much time in like two to no, 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 scheme na yan para sa Mendoro, which is really good, especially as they go on in season 2024. We're deadlocked at 28 here, almost past the halfway point of this second period. Delis will go for another three point shot. This one's short, rebound to Mendoro. Well, nakita natin ng mintish yung tira na ni uh, Delis, but you, you kind of like that because really a catch and shoot situation is the best one of the best way and the easiest way to score but you got to practice your shots from the outside if you want to make them miss by caspe now here comes bigolandia gallego pass a little bit too low for pariliagas the recovery from rafi reyes two uri ue red warriors connecting on that play unfortunately pari could not hit from the short corner desiderio has the height advantage over rafi reyes desiderio out to Ariar, Caspe, the bounce pass. That's the easiest shot of this afternoon for Paul Desiderio. Find the open man, the guy that's least uh, defended. That's the one that you hit, and that's the one who makes the shot. And JV Gallego finally getting a three from the outside, Abby. Uh, this is also a guy that I've had the luxury of seeing grow up through the years. Uh, he's, uh, if I remember right, a nephew of Coach Horacio Lim, and that's why he used to attend a lot of our practices before when we were in high school. Back then, he was still with Chiang Kai-shek, and he has blossomed into a great scorer for stint here in the MPBL. He wants the basketball on top against Paul Desiderio. Nine on the shot clock. Gallego. He's got the switch. Goes right. Good defense by Kit Ariar. Here comes Caspe. The sidestep, slow pace, no problem for J.J. Caspe. Well, we've seen a lot of players do that, actually slowing down that zero step to allow you more decision time. Good execution right there. The lead now back with the blue shirts, 32 to 31. Alanis drives hard. And Mendoro will give up the foul. Melton acknowledging that personal. Well, one thing that we've observed so far in that side ball screen, as we see this drive right here, Javi, this zero. is the fast break of the game that's brought to you by New Star Max. Win to the max. Talagang mananalo ka naman talaga sa fast break of the game kung ganyan ang galawan mo. Grabe yung natatanggal yung momentum ng defender. Di mo alam kung titira na o ano pa magi slow step pa eh, no? But but again, uh, going back to what I was saying earlier about that uh, ball screen action of uh, Bicolanja, well, one thing that I'm sure they're going to be talking about at the half is, you know, what happens in the front end of that uh, ball screen and the back end. It, it seems that everybody's just standing around, 
on those wings and this, those corners. Somebody's got to be able to do backdoor cuts, drifts in the corner, lifts on the other side, so that you have other options outside of that straight roll by the big man on zero the rebound action. Sorry, zero out of two from the line para kay Shaq Alanis. You, you want more off-ball action, coach, here from this Mindoro squad. That's right. That's exactly it. Not just to focus on one side of the floor. You got to keep that defense bu busy on the weak side, too. Shot clock winding down here for the guys in blue. Olivares still has the basketball. He has to take this. That's way off. And not really the possession that Coach J.R. Kawaling is proud of. All right, well, well, the first and foremost, they weren't able to form the triangle. Nothing was formatted in the right way in that last offensive set. It really was trying to just do something out of nothing offensively para sa Mindoro. Under three minutes to play here in the first half. That's Rafael Go making his first appearance here in the game para kay Coach Raymond Valenzona. Olivares now. It's with Lester Reyes. Back to Ralph. Olivares working against the defense of Shaq Alanis. Desiderio playing the two-man game with Pableo. Kobe on the short roll. Back to Paul. Desiderio back irons the three. Gallego looks ahead. No fast break opportunity. Alanis momentarily all alone. Sidestep beauty. I've seen that a lot from him. My former junior NBA matchmate. Uh, he's just so much heads up basketball in that move by Shaq. Waited for that closeout. And when that came, two dribble penetration with the left hand finish. Lead back with Picolandia. 33 to 32. Olivares. Well challenged shot by Rafael Go. Two on two break. Alanes takes it. Left hand. Does it go? That trickles out, but he will be going to the line for two shots. He can redeem himself from that zero out of two outing the previous time. Check this out. Shaq Alanis. That sidestep Euro a la Manu Ginobili. Uh -huh. Getting the two points. Mr. Alanis. He saw that close out on his right shoulder and immediately opted not to shoot and instead to dribble penetrate. But Shaq's been struggling here on the free throw. Five points now so far in the game. Para kay Shaq Alanis, but zero out of three. The last three attempts. Mm -hmm. Short. It, it seems that he releases the ball so high up. Right. It, it's it's kind of out of rhythm on the way that he shoots it. Desiderio. Go switches on him. Pableo loses it. Can he recover the scramble? That's last touch on. Ooh, I thought that last touch was on Chris Xavier. Chris Xavier, yeah, it, me too. I thought I saw that one the same way. Our referees will be correcting the call. It will stay with uh -huh. Mindoro, but they will only have two seconds on their shot clock. Coach Jericho Walling will be calling a timeout to talk things over and perhaps develop a shot that will work with this remaining time on their 24 seconds. One minute and 20 remaining in the first half. We'll take a short break. Picolandia last year when they were still known as the Volcanoes, as I mentioned earlier before the game, they were dead last in the whole league actually, not just in the Southern Division. One win against 27 losses. Back. Back to the game here. Two seconds on the shot clock. Teodoro, that's off to the left. Mark Yu in the game for the first time, former Manila star. Corner pocket three, Marvin Lee. 
That wouldn't work. Desiderio. And it's cherry picking. Para kay Tay Tay Chidoro. Yeah, forget about it. If you've got Paul Desiderio on a leaking out Tay Tay Chidoro in a fast break, forget it. Score it already. A lead back with the blue shirts. Forward pass by Desiderio. Heads up play to get it to Tay Tay Chidoro. And we are now all tied up. No, sorry. Mindoro ahead by two points. 35 to 33. We'll be taking a short break. Lester Reyes and his squad ahead by just one point, not two points, as I earlier said. We're still here at the Orion Sports Complex for day two of the Mardika Pilipinas Basketball League. Under a minute to play here in the first half for Bicolandia and the Tamaraus. Offensive foul called against Rafi Reyes as he tried to set a screen for Marvin Lee. Yeah, actually, I, I felt that he had his two hands out there trying to provide that screen on the cross uh, corner exit. And that's after the timeout by mm -hmm. Coach Raymond Valenzona. One of the most frustrating things for a head coach is right. to turn the ball over right after you call a ceasefire. But Teodoro. Trying to sneak his way past the defense. Bono is back inside for Coach Zier Kawali. Going up against Chris Javier. Oh, Bono wow. up and under, off the back. That is good for the former UAP MVP. Mark Yu on the other side. Rafi Reyes has all the time in the world. Air balls the three. Olivares secures possession. RJ Delis felt that he was hit on that loose ball encounter but take a look at this coach well, talk about a big man who actually stays in control you gotta have a really good footwork to be able to do that and ken has been living with that ever since his playing day ken bono how many times have we seen that through the years that's always been his style of play he is not the most athletic player but he is so intelligent he's so skilled and he knows how to use that body frame to be able to take advantage of whatever the defense is throwing at him. And understanding where that defense is coming from, or what the weak side defense is doing. If there's none, then it's up to him to decide on what to do. I mean, bottom line, you have to have that footwork and that straight-up body control if you're a big man wanting to post up. They're checking on that last play if there was any excessive contact that needed to be punished. Mm -hmm. RJ Delis went down after that rebound by Ralph Olivares. Both coaches taking this opportunity to huddle their teams. It's been a tight encounter between these two squads so far. A lot of changes in the lead, but now Mindoro leading by 3, 36 to 33 with 21.1 seconds left. Our officiating crew has reached a decision and it's only going to be a normal foul against RJ Delis. Number three on Bicolandia. And what's really happened so far if you see this contested uh, instance right here. Well, just a lot of contact but you know, nothing really fishy about it. I think RJ felt that the nudge after Olivares I got did, possession right. was intentional. Yeah. You know, might have been, but it's not too much. Shot clock is off. Last shot time para dito sa Mindoro. Desiderio has it. He has been so clutch throughout his career. Let's see what, how he can do here. Oh, oh wow. leaves it for Lester Reyes. What a way! to finish the second quarter for the Mindoro Tamaraos. 
And Paul Desiderio really just keeps on finding ways to have others involved offensively for his team. Desiderio, although he has been struggling to put the ball through the hoop, his playmaking ability when the clock is winding down, especially in end quarter situations, always ever so valuable that time baiting the defense, dropping it off to his big man, Lester Reyes. And now, Mindoro up by 5, 38 to 33. This halftime score is brought to you by GameX.
back here at the Orion Sports Complex for your Maharlika Pilipinas Basketball League. My name is Andrea Indiso and right now, we will be having our halftime interview kasama si Sir Ivan Ray Cayanan, the Operations Manager of Satellite at syempre si Sir Brian Fernandez, the Territory Sales Manager of Bataan. Thank you so much gentlemen for joining me here at the half. Unahin ko na muna ang kausapan itong si Sir Brian. Sir Brian, for our viewers to get to know more about Satellite, anong sulit sayang offer ang uh, para sa mga Satellite subscribers ang available po dito today sa MPBL? Para sa mga para sa mga nandito sa arena, uh, maaari nyo mapanood ang MPBL sa Satellite. Meron kaming promo ngayon na uh, buy one take one load. So subscribe na. Wow, parang napakagandang offer nun, sir. Ah. Next question po, ano na naman po yung mapapanood sa Satellite Sacto Load 149? Sulit talaga ang panonood ng pag nag kayo ng Satellite Sacto Load 149. Dahil unang-una, mapapanood nyo ang matitinding laban ng MPBL sa MPTV Channel 53. Bukod po dito, marami ring movie channels tulad ng Celestial Movies Pinoy at Cinema One. Kids Channel, Tantagalize, tulad ng DreamWorks at International Entertainment Channel, tulad ng Warner TV. Kaya register na at bumili na ng loads mula sa aming mga signal store. Wow, napakadami naman po palang channels na available. Lumipat naman tayo sa aking kaliwa para makapag-sabi rin siya ng mga statements niya about satellite. Sir, with everything na sinabi ni Sir Brian, paano naman makakapag-subscribe o makakabili ng load ang mga gustong makanood ng MPBL at saka yung iba pang mga channels na sinabi niya sa satellite? Uh, mga batayenyos, sa mga hindi pa naka-satellite, meron po kaming special promo from April 8 to 14, 500 pesos off with free second month load. At sa mga naka-satellite subscribers na dyan, may 10 pesos discount pag nagpa-load kayo sa satellite box nyo from April 8 to 14. Dito kaya grab na din dahil limited time offer lang po ito. Visit lang tayo sa Signal Store sa SM Balanga, second floor, near Cyber Zone, or pwede kayong tumawag sa 0917-112-5609. Alright, thank you so much. Kaya naman mga kaliga, subscribe na po tayo sa Satellite. What a very informative halftime interview. Huwag po kayong aalis. Magbabalik pa rin po ang MPBL. Halftime now between Mindoro and Bicolandia after Bicolandia was ahead by five after the end of the first quarter. It's Mindoro who is up ahead by the same number, 38 to 33, the numbers after the first 20 minutes of action. Well, uh, clearly you see that there uh, Mindoro having a plus eight when it comes to field goal attempts from earlier because of how they execute their uh, triangle offense with the inside point still on the side of Mendoza, there are plus 12 in there. Ken Bono's been really having his day inside, especially those good assists in the, inside the shaded area. But Bicolandia getting a lot of help from the bench. Marvin Lee, together with Chris Javier, accounting for 13 of the 23 bench points of Bicolandia. Then on fast break points, it's 12 versus 8 in favor of Bicolandia. And all these fast breaks are really what forced Mindoro to be fouling a lot. And so that on the free throw standpoint, it's a plus 12 advantage on attempts favor for Bicol over that of Mindoro. Oh, what's very clear here is Bicolandia is looking to run while Mindoro really trying to set up their triangle offense in the half court. But they do have eight fast break points to show for. But ito nga ang Bicolandia, they already have 12. As we take a look at their leading scorers, Chris Javier off the bench with eight. Alanis and Lee combining for 10 points, while RJ Deles has that one three-point shot from that left corner earlier. Sa kabilang panic naman, Ken Bono leading all scorers for Mindoro with eight. Olivares with seven, Kedoro with six. And Paul Desiderio with five points after struggling 
to shoot that basketball in the first quarter. I see right there, it's the total 19 points on the starters alone of Mendoro as opposed to uh, Bigolanja. Only 10 points from the starters and everyone else really co contributing coming out of the bench. And so a little bit of rhythm is what uh, the starters of Bigolanja got to do at the start of this half and in to be able to sustain in the hope of uh, getting a win in their first game here in season uh, six. Coach Raymond Valenzona, who was the head coach of that legendary San Sebastian Staglitz team that featured the likes of the Bringas brothers, Paul Lee, Ryan Buenafe, and Eric Salamat. Now, the new head coach of Bicolandia for this season. Third quarter now underway. This is Javi Palanya joined by Coach Mike Perez and Miss Andrea Indicio. First game of day two of the 2024 Maharlika Pilipinas Basketball League. First procession to Bicol. Mark Yu failing to connect from that left corner. Not really known as an outside shooter. And, and that's one thing I guess that uh, the Bindoro team is trying to uh, test right now. The outside shooting of uh, Bicol. Bono at the post. Back to Desiderio. Paul short on the three. That seems to be a push against Lester Reyes. Uh, Reyes has really been very active on the offensive glass here today already with two offensive rebounds for a total of five boards in this match. That though will be already number three against him. Well, as you see right here, uh, Mindoro once again going back to a little bit of a zone well, for, for two things. It's just the shooting of uh, Bicol as well as to rest some of the defense action of their players on the floor. Pariliagas could it hit. Gallego is there for the putback. Well, that's one thing special about uh, JB Gallego. He can actually create from the outside, shoot it from there also, but you know, offensively he can do boards and rebounds just like that one putback that we saw. Five points now in the game for JV Gallego. Ball will stay with Mindoro. Uh, right now, um, Coach Raymond actually trying to switch it up on that triangle uh, sequence going on the solo side with that corner empty and trying to see how the weak side action comes. Second personal lab by RJ Delis. Mark, you almost getting the steal right there on the baseline inbound. And Mark, you has to be able to challenge and play up against the more experienced guards of uh, Mendoza if he want to lead this uh, Bicol team into a win today. Ken Bono continues to terrorize at the post. He is now in double figures with 10. Gallego trying to go back to back. Unfortunately, the back shot did not work. Bounce pass from Paul Desiderio Olivares. Everything but the shot right there. 40 to 35. Delis pushing the pace. Lee doesn't settle. Puts the ball on the deck. Leaves it. Liagas could not hit. Olivares wants it up top. A little bit too forward. That's going to stay with Mindoro. Well, Olivares knew that he should have taken that shot already. Looks at Paul and says, that's on me. Uh, that's my bad. Gotta, should have taken that shot too. And, and so if you're Bicol, you have to be very cognizant that once you miss, somebody's got to go down and defend in open floor against a very deadly Bindoro team. Bono got time to set. A three-point shot is short. Gallego ahead against Melton. Good transition defense here for Mendoro. Mark Yu will try his luck once again. This time, his luck goes down. It's one of those shots that he's really got to make if you want to open up that lane. Speaking of Gallego, Mark Hugh, and uh, even Marvin Lee to be able to open up that lane for those dribble penetrations in favor for Bicol. Olivares gets the screen from Ken Bono. Ralph, baseline jumper is pure. Good screen right there provided by Ken. Timing that defense a little bit. A good block again on the other floor. Offense, defense, Ralph Olivares doing it all so far here in the third quarter para sa Mindoro. This three-point shot of the game is brought to you by Extreme One-Stop Shop Appliances. Former Manila star Mark Yu now represents Bicolandia. Draining it from the outside, the stretch and finish from RJ Delis. Kita mo yung frustration kagad ni Ken Bono. Alam niya, you know, missed coverage yun para sa bigs. Now, Mindoro, another steal right here. 
Turnover spiling up here in the third. Oh, behind the back pass. Ooh, you could see the frustration in RJ Delis. That could have been a highlight play for Sabicolandia. Yeah, wraparound pass on a streaking Pari Liagas in the middle. I'm sure Pari didn't expect that, but you know, he did the first thing that he could was to attempt that shot. But going back a step in that uh, earlier sequence before that play with Pari Liagas. This free throw is brought to you by Extreme Appliances, ang subok at kompletong appliance brand ng Pilipinas. Liagas able to sink the first. Picolandia in the first half was only 7 out of 15 from the charity strike. A split coming from the former Paranaque Patriot, Marvin Lee, could not hit from three. Desiderio. Who applied his trade in the 3x3 circuit for quite some time. Now back in the 5-on-5 five five game. And his first season in the MPBL here playing for Mindoro. Bono short on the hook shot. Ricolandia trying to assess the defense. Mark Yu, floater no good. Offensive rebound to Pariliagas. Gallego sprays it to the corner. Marvin Lee, nothing but bottom. So far, the two out of three from beyond the arc. Speaking of Bicol, they've been very successful from there. But in so far as post-ups, this guy, they got to control. Ken Bono at the block. Reyes from the cross screen. Back out to Melton. Then on the shot clock, back to Lester. Reyes against RJ Deles. No touch. Desiderio is stripped. Two shots coming right up for Paul Desiderio. Pero dun kita mo yung difference pag kasi Ken Bonner pumupost up before everyone else. And it's just so stable when you look at Ken Bonner on the post and it commands a lot of attention. And so you bring in that second defender which allows him to locate shooters or step away from that second uh, defender coming in. Paul Desiderio, after a successful stint with the UP Fighting Maroons in the UAAP, has had his ups and downs in his professional career. In fact, he incurred an ACL injury mm -hmm. a couple of years back and was actually deciding to retire from basketball until he got the opportunity to play 3x3 under Chooks to go. And then now he's back to the 5 on 5 game, playing here in the MPBL. What a luxury it is for all of our fans to be witnessing this kind of talent. Marvin Lee, short on the three once again. Chris Javier is back off the bench after a great stint in the first half where he scored eight off the bench. He's the leading scorer so far for Bicolandia. Melton, out to Tete. Teodoro, no good on the three. RJ Delis with the board. Casajeros will challenge the defense of Ken Bono. No foul called. We go back the other side. No numbers for Mindoro. Desiderio, the spin, no finish, but two more free throws coming up para kay Paul Desiderio. Well, a heads up play right there by Paul Desiderio. Tried to go middle, understood that defense was coming on that top side, spun baseline, and he got fouled on that way. You know, a lot of good stuff still in that gut of Paul Desiderio. Oh, definitely. He is. Still in his prime, Paul Desiderio is. Coming from Lilo and Cebu. Played for Blackwater in the PBA. You know, a little bit of a struggle maybe on his first playing day here in the MPBL, but I'm sure his skills and the talents are going to catch up later on. And that's really what matters here. You know, you could have struggles early. But you got to be able to recover and finish a lot stronger and hopefully do a deep playoff run for your team. Desiderio splits his charities. We're all tied up at 44. Javier goes to the other side. Alanes, three for three. That's short. Teodoro finds Desiderio on the wing. Paul hangs. Good, honest defense coming from Chris Javier. Teodoro playing the passing lanes. And Paul is all alone on the other side. Mindoro. Back ahead by two. Well, that all made possible because of the deflection of Tete Teodoro and just spreaded it out there for Paul to finish. 
There's a foul on the rebound play. It looks like it's going to go against Lordi Casajeros. That's number three. Number four on Vigolandia. JJ Caspe will come off the bench to give Baldesideri a breather. Great performance at the start of the third for the former Fighting Maroon. Kint Ariar finally gets the two points. That's the first basket of the game. Barakay Ariar, he was 0 out of 3 in the first 20. And that prompts Coach Raymond Valenzona to burn a timeout here in the third quarter. Look at that. The scramble ends up with Kint Ariar who turns stone into gold 48 to 44 we'll take a short break You are still watching the MPBL. At kasama ko nga ngayon ang Mindoro sniper, no other than Rodel Vaigana. Rodel, malamang hinahanap ka na ng mga Mindoro fans. Bakit nga ba hindi pa pumapasok sa court ang aming Mindoro sniper? Rodel, bakit nga ba? Uh, Unang-una, uh, nagpahinga muna ako dahil sa meron na ramdaman ang hamstring. Medyo masakit. Ayaw ko muna ng percent, baka lumalay. Eh. Mahaba pa naman yung season. Kailangan, sabi ni coach, kailangan uh, mahaba yung season. Kailangan yung katawan condition. Well, that is so sad to hear. Sa palagay mo, kailan ka ba makakabalik ulit sa paglalaro? Uh, gusto ko nga sana maglaro. Uh, sana susunod, makabalik na ako. Uh, yung mga pan sa amin, taga Mindoro, supportahan nyo pa rin kami. Uh, huwag kayong masawa manood sa amin, uh, mga taga Mindoro. Thank you so much. And that's our short update from the Mindoro sniper, Rodel Vayan. Back to you, gentlemen. Thank you so much, Andrea. Rodel Vaigan last year averaged almost 13 points per game para sa Mindoro when they were still known as the Disciplinados as Rojas scores to tie this game up. 48 apiece after that timeout by Coach Raymond Valenzuela. A 4 to nothing run. Teodoro from the corner, no good. Rios, nobody boxing him out. That's the second offensive rebound for Jordan Rios in this game. And I mean, Doro's really been having problems on transition defense. That's really forced what forced Biko to come back and uh, at least tie it late, earlier at 48 right now, which is Mindoro by two. And what about RJ Delis? The passion once again showing after he makes that and getting the end one opportunity. Delis tying the game up once again. Kobe Pobleo will come in for Coach Jair Kawali. Delis now with seven points in this match. Two points away from tying his season average from last year. RJ Delis, always one of the most energetic players on the court. And you know, he's a guy who just loves to play. Caspe to the corner. Teodoro, no good. Rojas taps it to the wrong guy. Nobody inside. Rios with the easy two points. Well, so far, Rios really been that scavenger guy. Para dito kay coach uh, J.R. Kawaling. And how about that struggle by Tay Tay from beyond? Marvin Lee looking to get it back with a three. Long rebound goes to Shaq Alanis. RJ Delis short on the stick back attempt. Another opportunity here. There's a foul against Kobe Pobleo. A little bit too aggressive right there. Pressuring Shaq Alanis. Well, if you look at it, body language and aggressiveness seems to be on the side of Picolanja, but you got to get back on defense, especially if you have Paul finishing on that side. Our lucky fan of the game is brought to you by Buenas. Javier hands it off to Alanis. Marvin Lee will not hesitate was asking for a foul, no whistle was blown. 52 to 51, 
JJ Caspe from the corner, still no go. Look who's there, Kent Ariar, no good as well. Jordan Rios cementing and reintroducing his reputation as one of the best rebounding guards here in the MPBL. And again, there are some up skills that you get out of 3x3. That game is so much faster, it commands players to be able to crash boards. And naging automatic na okay, Jordan Rios, which that's already his third or fourth offensive rebound for the game, and he's really been that scavenger that's allowed points here for Mindoro. Jordan Rios facing his former Terra Firma 3x3 teammate in Shakalanes yeah. yeah. this afternoon. And I talked to them before the game. It was kind of different to be seeing each other on opposing sides. Uh -huh. uh, that's professional basketball for you. Sometimes you're going to be on the same side in months, weeks, maybe even uh, a year after. You would see yourselves on opposing teams. Yep. And even if you look at the way that they run uh, fast break, speaking of uh, Mendoro, makikita mo talagang meron pang konting kailangang familiarity na kailangang ma-develop to understand where the open guys would be out there in the open floor. So far, Mendoro with 10 fast break points in this game while Bicolandia has 13. Ariar hands it off to Andoy Estrella against Mark Yu. Estrella gets past Yu. Couldn't get the left hand floater to go. Mark looks up, sees Alanis. Shock the sidestep, right hand finish, no good. Shot clock reset here for the white shirts. Bicolan, yes, Shock Alanis goes for three, no good. Third serving for RJ Delis. And he draws another foul. He will be going to the line for another two shots. Well, earlier in the first half, we talked about how Mindel, Mindoro has actually been controlling the boards. But here in the second half, at least the start of the third quarter, Bicolange is actually making a good case on that uh, area of the game also. Deles energizing this five on the floor for Coach Raymond Valenzona. One minute to 39 seconds to go here. Almost a double-double in this game para sa kanya. He is one rebound away from achieving that. Art Aquino, former Sun One Knight, and Rizal Golden Cooler will now come in for Coach JR Kawaling. In Ariar, elbow jumper, nothing but the bottom. Good read right there. Give it up to Daniel. Have him create and figure out which side to go. And if he doesn't have any, you gotta finish exactly what Ariar did. Rojas against Art Aquino. Drop pass, Chris Javier. Couldn't power his way past the defense. Teodoro pushes it. Ando Estrella looks to the other side. Estrella picks up his dribble. Teodoro, catch, set, fire. Off to the left. Mark Yu goes up and gets the two points. Well, Mark Yu a little bit more aggressive here at the start of the third quarter. Another steal for Mark. Yu forces the issue. Delis against the defense of Kit Ariar. RJ Delis, 12 points now in this game. Well, Mark Yu making things happen here for Bicol. Delis gets. The defensive rebound, he is now with a double-double. Deles once again, almost lost his balance. You from almost the same spot, oh, wow. he hit the three earlier and he gets it to go. There's gotta be the Mark U quarter here for Nicolandia. 60 to 56, Chidoro to get it back. Two seconds left. Alanis, does he have enough time? Aquino foils that attempt. I don't think it would have counted had it gone in even. Well, what a third period that was, especially during the last two minutes for both of these teams. Tete Teodoro getting past Chuck Alanis. Mark Yu could not get there on time, but Tete Teodoro, even with the defense right there, no problem in training that outside shot. They're down by just one, 60 to 59. This end of the third quarter score is brought to you by GameX.
Bumalik ang Maharlika Pilipinas Basketball League, ang Liga ng Bawat Pilipino. This is now the fourth quarter between Mentoro and Bicolandia. Abby Palanya alongside Coach Mike Perez and Miss Andrea Indicio. Thank you so much everybody watching on MPTV Channel 98 on Signal, Satellite Channel 53 on our Facebook and YouTube channels as well as on Pilipinas Live. And to begin this last quarter, Shaq Alanis scores to extend this Pico lead to 3, 62 to 59. Olivares, who has been brilliant all throughout this game, continues to score here for Mindoro. Uh, well, Bicol has started quarters really strong. Mindoro still able to respond. Another good move here by uh, Barry Liagas. Barry Liagas hasn't had so much luck with his jumpers here today, but there inside, he makes sure that that goes down. Estrella, a little bit too flat on that three-point shot. Deles, who had nine points in the third quarter, up ahead to Marvin Lee, and Lee, that's off the glass for two. Well, Marvin Lee making uh, Mindoro pay for that miscue on the offensive end. You pass that ball to the corner, you gotta be a little bit more patient to figure out where the other options are gonna come from. Ken Bono, no good off the bank. Ariar gets Delis in the air. RJ, not very happy with that call. Play of the game here is brought to you by Buenas. The fake, couple of dribbles, and then the kiss off the glass for Marvin Lee. Another guy in double figures for Bicolandia. Bicolandia actually a little bit, I guess, fortunate that Ken Bono's missing those open shots. Those are actually good looks for Ken and really just couldn't make it. And so if, if for the other teams that's going to go up against uh, Mendoza, if you got Ken Bono right there open that way, there will come a point that's going to hit those shots. And Ken Bono has been so efficient in this game, especially during the first half where he was four out of eight from inside the yard, just could not hit from three. Lee gets past Estrella. Goes by Bono, and that's another two points for Marvin Lee on the left side. And Marvin Lee really right now just toying on the defense of uh, Andoy. You got to be able to qualify what kind of closeout you're going to do with Marvin Lee. Estrella almost throws it away. That's going to be off of Shaq Alanis. 13 seconds left here on the shot clock for the guys in blue. Well, the same thing's been the issue for the Mendora movement on the weak side. That's something they gotta work on. Ariar flashes middle, elbow jumper would not work this time. Pariliagas with the rebound. Sakalanis to the right side. Marvin Lee, sort of a heat check right there for him, even though he's hit baskets inside the paint. And that pass too forward for Paul Desiderio to catch. Yeah, just two way out of uh, the reach of Paul Desiderio. 68 to 62. Alanis to Rojas. Rojas forces up that shot. There's a guy ahead that was Olivares, but Desiderio decides to wait. In Ariar, back to Paul. Desiderio short on the three. Ken Bono blocked Good by block. Pariliagas. A good timing right there by Pari Liagas. Gallego leaves it. Marvin Lee, slow one-two step. There's a foul. A lot of arms uh -huh. being thrown and a lot of them flailing away. So our referees will be reviewing that last play. Uh, there's definitely a call that's going to be made here. You just can't allow all those arms to be flailing. To your point, uh, Javi. Pariliagas having a little chat there with his former UE teammate, Ra Ralph Olivares. Mm -hmm. Olivares has been brilliant in this game. 9.6 rebounds in a starting role for Coach J.R. Kawaling. So far, Bicolan has been the one controlling the game right here. They're, they're up six. They're running the open floor. And uh, much as Mindoro has been trying to do the same, they're really just not getting enough movement on the weak side. 
and point blank shots they could have easily made but you know couldn't convert any and so they trail right now by six uh, this wasn't always the case coach Mindoro looked uh -huh. like they were in a rhythm in right. the first half that Picolandia could not get to there's the last play Olivares getting it on Rojas and then yeah. Rojas apparently hitting his teammate Tipe Gallego in the process yeah. I guess he was trying to sell it as well and so inadvertently hitting his teammate Well, the Beagle bench, they want sportsman -like a sportsman-like foul, foul and they're going to get it Ralph against Ralph Olivares. So this will be two foul. shots plus ball possession. And to make matters worse for Olivares in Mindoro, that is number four laban sa kanya. Yeah, and he, he's got to watch it. Uh, you know, he's been a vital piece in this rotation. Uh, we, we've rarely seen actually uh, Justin Melton on the floor. I think a lot of it has to do with how Olivares has been uh, playing actively on both ends. But I see him here on the scoring table, set to check in in just a moment. This free throw is brought to you by Extreme Appliances, sang subok at kompletong appliance brand ng Pilipinas. Rojas sinks the second. This is now an eight-point lead for Bicolandia, 70 to 62. I guess this is the strongest five of Mindoro right now on the floor. Bono, Melton, Rios, Desiderio, and Lester Reyes. Four capable scorers and a very serviceable role player in big man Lester Reyes. However, he isn't able to stop Rojas on that drop step move. Defense has been a challenge too. Para dito sa Mindoro, they, you know, almost at will, Bicol has been scoring. The lead is now at 10. The first double-digit lead for Bicolandia in this game. Rios kick out. Bono, can he finally hit from the outside? He knew it was good the moment it left his hands. Excellent read right there by uh, Jordan Rios. Finding the open corner exit by Ken Bono on that drive. Offensive rebound for Edsel Rojas. He loses it. Bono ahead to Melton. Rios wants it on the left side. Melton will not give it up. Justin takes it. No good. Gallego, defensive rebound. Marvin Lee almost traveled. JV Gallego from the outside. Short. Rios bounce pass. Desiderio almost loses it. He fumbles, goes up. And that's going to be a foul against Picolandia. Elder Skelter basketball from both squads here the past four possessions and that's exactly what uh, Mendoro should be doing I mean they miss on one end you got to push it the other way you have enough cards that can actually fill those lanes out in a fast break and try to finish strong this there is I guess bleeding right there on his arm uh, the referees looks like they will allow the Sidereo to shoot those free throws That's a long cut yeah. near the elbow. He's going to try to wipe it off, but no mandatory substitution yet being implemented here by our game officials. Short on both free throws. Looks like that cut was bothering him. Gallego goes up strong Ooh. against Ken Bono. The ability to be able to keep that momentum and that balance against a bigger and stronger Ken Bono. Reyes, push shot too strong. Oh. Lucky tap. <laughs> I think that was off a Beacon player. Right. Uh, Mendoro will take that as long as it counts as their basket. And they get a turnover here on the other side. Coach Raymond Valenzona not too happy with the last couple of sequences. Lead still at seven here. Bono at the left corner. Reyes wants it on the block, doesn't get it. Yodoro takes the three, goes to Melton. Ken Bono, baseline jumper, no bounce. Jordan Rios, another oh, offensive wow. rebound. Jordan Rios has been that guy. 
Alanis against his former 3x3 teammate. Gives it up to Gallego. Gallego had that ball knocked away. Bono, look at him leading the break. Melton, all the time in the world. No good on the three. Ken Bono kisses it off the glass. That's two points. Mindoro down by just three, 74 to 71. The 15 now. points in the game for Ken Bono. Marvin Lee had that ball tapped from behind. Another fast break opportunity here for the Blue Shirts. They lose it. A lot of this run by Mindoro actually made possible because Jordan Rios was getting those rebounds early on and hitting open players. Meantime, Dete right here with a strong three. And this lucky fan of the game is brought to you by Buenas. Substitutions here for Coach J.R. Kawaling. Ken Bono will take a seat on the bench. Para kay Kint Ariar. Paul Desiderio also comes back after getting that cut tended to. High ball screen for Mark Yu. The handoff to Lordi Casajeros. Out to Chris Xavier. He can hit that. He's shown that here in this game. Gallego saves it. Mark Yu, the lob. RJ Delis decides to go down first. Goes up and that's another two points for RJ Delis. Well, RJ Delis has been scoring scatteredly in, in the game. So you don't feel so much of his points. But he's really been hitting those at moments when they needed it most. 11 points here in the second half. Nine in the third for RJ Delis. Paul Desiderio connects from the outside. 76 to 74. Mark Yu directing traffic here for Picolandia. Yu almost walks. Javier to the corner. Delis will not take it. Good ball movement. Gallego will. JV misses. Lester Reyes the rebound. Desiderio now with the rock. Melton to Kit Ariar on the secondary. Desiderio with a hand in his face. It goes up long. The tap goes out of bounds. Last touch, Mindoro. But Paul felt that shot. He knew that it was in rhythm. But really just back rimmed it. Coach Jericho Walling still applauding the effort of his boys here on the floor. Kowaling also a great fourth quarter player uh -huh. himself when he was playing for FEU back in the day. Mm -hmm. Also a member of the first iteration of the Gilas Filipinas squad under Coach Raiko Toroman that featured the likes of Mark Barroca, JV Casho, and current MBBL player Jason Ballesteros. Gallego turns the corner. Gallego with a left hand. No good. Delis with another rebound. Mark Yu has had two threes in this game. Mindoro finally comes up with it. Teodoro seems to be his favorite spot here today. And they take Teodoro. Three fingers to the air. Three points inside the basket. That's the most dangerous run if you're Mindoro. Melton leaking it out to Tete with Paul on the weak side. 77 to 76, Mindoro back in the driver's seat. Dennis could not get it back for them. Two minutes and 20 remaining in this game. Desiderio slows it down. Teodoro finds no need to go on rush hour here. Not a good foul at all by Lordi Casaeros. I mean, Tete was not even shooting or looking to shoot. He was just trying to extricate himself to find an open guy that's free. But how about this one? A step in three from the right elbow. Tete Teodoro has come alive here in the penultimate period. Timeout taken. Two minutes and 12 seconds remaining in this game. We'll be back.
looking at the MPBL leadership led by our beloved commissioner, Captain Marbel Kenneth Doremdes, joined by Operations Chief Emerson Oreta and our security head, the destroyer Rudy Distrito. Back to the ball game, Justin Melton after the timeout could not hit from three. And we now enter the twilight zone as brought to you by GameX. Bicolania with a chance, an opportunity to score on the fast break, but they throw it away, giving the guys in blue a chance to extend this lead. Now you gotta be able maybe to defend. Even four. Yeah, now you gotta be able to defend here against uh, Mindoro. Melton, the Desiderio on the right quadrant. Mark Yu is right in his grill. They blitz ball. Teodoro, another three oh. on the way. That is good. Tete Teodoro is scorching hot. Boy, Tete really finding those open spots on that DHO a little bit. Just one little one-two step, getting into that rhythm three. And talk about Paul Desiderio being unselfish, trying to find open teammates. And right here, Tete just says, I got this, guys. It's all net. Oh, Desiderio already with five assists in this game, but that man on your screen should have followed through 17 points in this game. Indoro ahead 80 to 76. Presenting our Suzuki muscular and sporty fan of the game, just like the Avenis, do more and achieve more with a muscular and sporty scooter from Suzuki, the Avenis. Oras na para magbuto. Back to the ball game here inside the Orion Sports Complex. This is Javi Palanya alongside Coach Mike Perez and Andrea Indiso. Tete Tidoro going on. A personal rampage here against Bicolandia, sinking back-to-back -back threes to give his squad a four-point lead. White shirts after the timeout. The quick trigger there by Chris Javier doesn't work. Sak Alanes will not waste any time. That's an air ball. Mark Yu keeps it alive, saves it to the wrong man. Marvin Lee with a counter steal. Lee, another rushed shot. Our referee pointing to the side of Mindoro, but because we are under two minutes, they can review that last out-of-bounds play. But, what, but once again, Javi, it's Jordan Rios that's right there in that rebound action. That could have been an easy rebound altogether for Mark Hugh, but Jordan understanding and locating the nearest guy after that shot was able to get himself in there. Boy, coach, three rushed three-point shots there right. by Bicolandia right. in that possession right after a timeout. Yeah, they have enough time, actually. You can't be rushing things. you got to find an open area where you have a really comfortable shot, understanding that there's still, indeed, more basketball ahead of you. This is just a four-point lead and one minute and 23 seconds left to play. Just like the legendary Joe Cantada would like to say, an eternity of basketball still ahead in this game. Well, both teams actually not shooting very well at 19% for Bicol and only 21% for uh, Mindoro, both roughly averaging at going 36, 37 attempts from out there. But it really was the timing of the mix of Tete Chidoro that spelled the difference here. So now if you're Bicol, you want to go the same route of taking that three, understanding that you've got, you know, very low percentages or maybe get a quick two, defend the other way. Because that's still a two possession game, no matter how you look at it. Boy, that's a huge 73 attempts between the two squads that's from right. three-point country. That, that's how bad it was from three, but really those two threes by Tete really changed the complexion in favor of Bindoro right now. Tete Tidoro will come back in. One minute and 23 seconds still remaining in this game. This is far from over, ladies and gentlemen. 
Hang on to your seats. Pressure defense here by Bicolandia. Kint Ariar throws the ball away. Mark you with the steal. He brings it past the timeline. Alanis goes right. Inside scoop with the left. No good. That's a stop for Mindoro. And that's a foul. Maybe even out of frustration right there by RJ Delis. Uh, well, part of uh, RJ Delis' frustration is that he's the leading scorer, but he never touched that ball on that possession. And so you have to be able to find those guys who actually have the hot hand and uh, bring you those buckets in the much needed ones. That's number four on RJ Delis. And he was even telling Shakalanes right after to pass that right, ball. Right, you gotta pass it. You got very able scorers right there, Mark Hill and even RJ Dallas. One minute and six seconds remaining in this game. Timeout one attack. This fast break of the game is brought to you by New Star Max. Win to the Max. Teiti Todoro, one of the buckets that aided his squad to get this lead against Bicolandia. One minute and six seconds remaining in this game. Justin Melton gets the inbound. Gallego pressuring. Ken Bono relieves that pressure. Absolutely no need to fast track things here for the guys in blue. Teodoro, the hot hand for the Tamaraus. That's going to be a foul against Mark Yu. And Bicol is already in the penalty. And that one really, Mark Yu got tempted because on this, he saw that Tete Teodoro had that open lane. And since him being the hot hand, you got to be able to stop him. But you defend without fouling, that's the case. Leite Tidoro a chance to up his total to 17 points in this game. Oh, Coach Raymond Valenzona will use his coach's challenge here. By the way, there's a new rule in terms of our coach's challenge for this year. Last year, you only had one coach's challenge, but this year, it still actually is the same. But if your first challenge is unsuccessful, then that's going to be it. Uh -huh. But if the challenge that you made was successful, there's still another challenge that you can use after that. And so we try to make these uh, changes and revisions so as to improve you know, the competitiveness in the game as well. Uh, Coach Mike, you know, after an explosive first two games, the first game of day two here in oh, the Ariad yeah. Sports Complex. Yeah. Looking very promising. We are going down the wire. And which is exactly how the first three games of this season should be. A lot of competition, neither team giving up. Because, I mean, let's face it, everybody's reloaded and, you know, got in more talent, made changes on the coaching side to make things a little bit more competitive here uh, amongst all the 30 teams that we've got. And there you see Coach Raymond Valenzona conferring with first assistant coach Matt Sia on that sideline for Vicolandia. That's Coach June Dizon right there, the one with the glasses. I guess he's in charge more on the skills training of uh, uh, Mindoro. Or Vicolandia, rather. The challenge was unsuccessful. And there you Call go, Miguel Perez has Mindoro already Mindoro announced Mindoro. the decision. Yeah. Challenge was unsuccessful. This was the play in question. Mark Yu trying to go for that steal. Although he did get all ball, there was a lot of contact right. downstairs. Right. So it will still be two free throws here for Tete Tidoro. That's right. And, and to your point, Javi, that really was a tip on the ball, but that body contact was the one who caused that foul to be called on Mark. 
Teodoro sinks the first. Last year, 11.5 points per game. Still with Mendoro. And Teodoro was a 66.7% free throw shooter in all of 21 games that he played out of the 28 possible for the Disciplinados. And right now, Bicol's got to play without a timeout here. They, they burned all their timeouts. So you got to play system ball here and find the open guy. And Dora, meanwhile, with still one timeout to burn. Mark you at the last minute, gets it to RJ Dellis. That's a quick score. That's what they need. Right. And that's exactly what Dellis was saying earlier about uh, that attempt that they had. You got to have that ball in the hand of Mark Dellis because he's the hottest guy scoring for your team. What's happening here? Our referees trying to say something to Ken Bono. I think it was about the uniform. Uh -huh. No call will be made. Play continues. The inbound to Tete Titoro. Deles with 16 points and 15 rebounds. Desiderio, the pressure release. Now back with Tete. There's a double. Ken Bono tries to chase for it. Javier gets it to Deles like a hot potato. Mark you for three. No good. Marvin Lee with the offensive rebound. Oh. Ooh, foul against Kit Ariar. But that's only the second team foul for Mindoro. So no free throws will be awarded here. Exactly 25 ticks on the game clock. Nicolandia will have to take it from the right side. Again, no more timeouts for Coach Raymond Valenzona. They need a quick score here. Mark you. Taking too much time. Gallego now. Right hand floater. That's good. 80 to 82. Nine points in the game for JV Gallego. This is not yet over. 15.6 seconds. We will stay on the air. Take a look at this once again. Well, earlier I thought that Mark you actually was taking a little bit more time than he should have. But the good thing, uh, JV Gallego was there, left-handed guy, going middle. We talked about it. Going middle, that's a very dangerous uh, opportunity for uh, Bicol. There you see Coach Jer Kowaling in his first ever head coaching stint in the professional ranks. Of course, Jer Kowaling was once the player that you would draw plays for in these kinds of situations full circle moment for him that's right and you know coming full circle i guess from a player down to a coach but one thing that uh Bicol has done actually was done well was play defense at the back court and so i guess what uh mindoro is doing they're trying to advance that ball in the front court they don't want to take that risk of, of pressure from the back uh, you just saw Alvin Capobres and Reds Palma, the newest additions for Negros. They will be facing Marikina in the game right after this one. 82 to 80, the double here on Ken Bono. Oh, wow. Gallego gets the steal. Gallego goes all the way. Ooh. Foul against Ball Desiderio. JB will be taking two free throws. JV Gallego got a good opportunity to try and equalize here at 82. That's a layup attempt. That's a shot. And so he should end up with free throws. You see here. Gallego, a rookie here in the MBBL, uh, playing like he is a veteran here in the closing seconds of this game. Gallego also hit the shot to get them to within two points and now he has a chance to tie it at 82. JV Gallego, this is his first trip to the free throw line in this game. Bicol as a team is 13 out of 22. Ooh. Gallego short on the first free throw. The big question now is are you going to make the second free throw or intentionally miss it? So in the hope of getting an offensive rebound. You see some crazy things done on free throw rebound, especially in end game. We'll see what happens here. 8.2 seconds. There you see his numbers on the screen. 
Gallego, will he miss this or make this? And he decides to do it. Swishes that second free throws. 8.2 seconds remaining in this game. One point lead for Mindoro. No more timeouts for Coach Jericho Walling. That's a quick foul, the quickest they possibly could commit. Yeah, and they, they wanted to do that so that they still get enough time to go back on the other end. Assuming that Tete makes these two free throws, that still would be a one possession game. But if he misses, then that altogether changes the complexion. But more importantly, Bicol doesn't have a timeout anymore, Javi. So they have to, to do it on the fly and figure out. Chidoro, three out of three from the free throw line this afternoon. And he swishes the first, no problem at all. You see him on the line, no jitters. Oh, yeah. These are situations that he embraces. These are situations that he loves. And you see that calmness on that shot, though, even the demeanor. 19 big points in the game for Tete Teodoro, 84 to 81. A three is needed for Bicolandia. Marvin Lee, can he tie this? No good. And that's going to be it. What the ball game. Wow. This is just game one of day two here at the Orion Sports Complex. And we went down the wire, almost needing another five minutes, coach. Yeah, you got to tip your hats off to Bicolandia. That was a good shot. Marvin Lee had a good look. A stop and a pop from three. Just a little bit to the right. That could have sent the game into overtime. What a great matchup between these two squads. Both teams really leaving it out on the floor after what was a shaky start from the field. Both teams starting to get a rhythm, uh -huh. especially in the fourth quarter. A lot of lead changes. No team leading by more than 10 points uh -huh. in this game. But in the end, Mindoro, with the nerves being calm, wins this ball game and gets their first victory of the season. The losing streak continues from last year for Bicolandia. And for our Buenas best player of the game, who else, Coach Mike? Uh, definitely. When the chips are down, the stars got to rise up. And so we give it back to Tete Jodoro. 19 points in the game for the former JRU heavy bomber. One of the few holdovers from last season's squad. He is now a stud playing for Coach Jair Kawaling in this revamped Mendoza squad. This final score is brought to you by GameX. Again, a victory for Mendoro, their first of the season against Picolandia after finishing. 6 and 22, 12th in the Southern Division last year. Our best player of the game is with Miss Anako Kay Aiko and si Pongkoy, si Alodia, si sino pa ba? Si Angelin and lahat ng mga taga Mindoro at sa mga taga Pola. Maraming maraming salamat sa suporta nyo. All right, once again, that is Tete Tudoro, our Buenas player of the game. Back to you guys. Thank you so much, Andrea. Once again, congratulations to Mr. Tudoro and the rest uh, the Mendoro squad that notched their first victory of the season. Up next, we have Negros going up against Marikina for the second game of our Monday triple header here at the Orion Sports Complex. For my partner, Coach Mike Perez, and for Miss Andrea Indicio, this has been Javi Padana. Keep it here, locked on the MPBL.